Hello everyone, welcome to another week of Fallout 4 mods. We got arenas, we got Star Wars, let's get to it. First up is the Cookery Knife by Boric123. A nice little knife for stabbing or shaving. This is also Boric123's very first custom mesh and texture weapon ever created. And for a first weapon, this looks pretty damn good. It comes in 2 and 4k textures, and has a top damage of 33 and a swing speed of medium. Keeping up with this week's weapons that start with K, the Kanabo is a big stick from Japan. There are four mods if you count the standard Kanabo for this weapon. The other three are barbed wire, spikes, and even more spikes. And there's also a duct tape grip if you've got some adhesive handy, top damage of 86 and a swing speed of medium. Nuka Breaker version 01 by Rock Creations. A call back to the New Vegas weapon and YouTube series it was based off of, this baby's got 10 mods in total including the standard model. All mods are stat based, no other visual things are added, but a few of the higher end mods add things like electrical, bleeding, and other types of damage. Top damage is 112 and 34 energy with a swing speed of medium. The Gravity Fist, a heavy unarmed energy weapon by Mike Moore. Breaking things up quite literally, this weapon is a beautiful work of art with a very nice amount of mods. Paint your weapon with your choice of black, white, or yellow. Three housing mods allow for increased damage and also mods to change ammunition used between fusion cells, cores, or plasma cartridges. Salvaged Assaultron Head Plus by Jake Necroix. I really like the Assaultron Head, but I never really used it. With this mod, you can increase the damage of the Assaultron Head along with adding some cosmetic features as well. Added is a pistol grip for better recoil and hip fire accuracy, along with three extra barrels, which are Deep, Gamma, and the Tesla Barrel. There are also two muzzles added, one that splits beams into multiple projectiles, and another that improves charge rate. Modular AN-94 Abacon by Corvalho. This is a beautiful rifle, and this weapon has a huge amount of mods, which allows you to customize it to your heart's content. You've got 15 receivers, 2 sights, 5 stocks, 8 magazines, 6 scopes, 2 suppressors, and a bayonet. You're also given the choice to switch calibers to basically anything except for shooting mini nukes out of the friggin' gun. Uh, just look here, you can see it's basically everything. And my favorite part of this weapon are the paint jobs. You've got the standard black, but then there are three custom ones. You've got the Fancy Wanderer paint job, Vault Tech, and Wasteland Camo. Fancy Wanderer makes me feel like owning one of Saddam Hussein's golden AKs, and the Vault Tech job is pretty good looking too. Pretty solid weapon with a ton of variation with the mods, and like I said, what really is a slam dunk for me are the paint jobs. I, I really love those. Makeshift Anti-Material Rifle by Shoe Burglar. Give me my shoes back. Created with makeshift pieces here and there, this weapon was thought up to take care of the Brotherhood of Steel power armor when the Brotherhood came to the Commonwealth. Included are 9 receivers, which include the usual 308 and 50, but also more unique ones like incendiary shotgun shells and a frag shot that fires grenades. Three barrels, which range from none, short, and then to long. Standard stock and marksman, along with the choice of no stock. Whoa! There's also ten scopes and three muzzles, one of which is a trumpet. Hmm, Lou Bega would be proud, everyone. Trumpet! I really enjoy this weapon. Definitely something that could be cobbled together and just fits into the game perfectly. Paramedic EMS Outfit Mods, standalone by Hopper Hoy. Included are four separate pieces of clothing. You've got the surgical mask, cap, EMS uniform, and EMS t-shirt. These can be combined together with only the t-shirt and uniform having to make you choose between the two. Both shirts increase charisma by two, and the cap increases perception by one. Now get out there, and start saving lives. Wasteland Tactical Camo Uniforms by Portraits Man. This adds five new retextures of an armor that's already in the game, and included are Desert, Jungle, Marine, Navy, and Spec Ops. Stormtrooper and Boba Fett armor by Sure Dude. Yeah, sure. This is actually two mods, but I combined them since the mod author has mentioned that in the future that's something that they want to do, so I figured just put them together. There's also a Stormtrooper helmet mod, which is also separate, but I, along with other people in the forums, were having trouble downloading it. Might be fixed now, but at the time I was recording this, couldn't get it. Both of these are true to the film, and while they may be lower poly than other mods, they still look pretty good. Along with that, the stats on these things are insanely high. You're going to be very well protected, so it's all up to you to just aim and shoot. If you can do that, alright? So I know Boba can do it, but Mr. Stormtrooper, I don't know. Oh, Ho Bueno Ham Radio 2K 1K by Tapioks. 
If you're some kind of sicko that likes radios, then you'll love this mod. Retextures all of the ham radios throughout the Commonwealth. There are options for 2K and 1K, depending on what your rig can handle and how much detail you want. Textures are fantastic, but, you know, radios, they're the devil, so 0 out of 10. But 10 out of 10 for the text, but radio, 0 out of 10. Retextured Cams, Efla's Unique Cams Version 2 by Ben Efla. You may recall we reviewed one of Efla's singular retextures a few months back. Well, Efla's back and everything cam-related is redone, version 2.0. This includes stem packs, rad axe, buff out, blood pack, rad away, and a radiated blood pack. All textures look fantastic and it really gives some new personality to each item. Salvage Beacons by King Gath, King Goth. King Gath. My name's King Gath. This easy to use mod allows you to put a bunch of junk in a container, shove a beacon in there, and before long a lonely settler will come and take everything and bring it back to the settlement all on his back and probably pull it out and the kids won't be able to, well, it, settlers come and pick your crap up basically. I've got time for sob stories. Settlements must have a communication system to be built in them before they can pick stuff up, but after that's done and a settler's assigned, build the beacons at a chemistry workbench, then let the heavy lifting go to someone else. That's right, not me. Tower Defense Horde Mode by... It's... Tower Defense Horde Mode by at Sky Slayer. This is a really creative mod that allows you to battle waves of enemies in currently two different arenas. To start, build the Atlas Neural Interface under Special and then plug into the Matrix. Inside, you'll find a bed to rest in case you have survival mode on, and you don't want to keep switching back and forth from getting in and out of the Matrix. There's also a hallway which leads to the Simulation Settings computer. Here you can set what arena to fight in, what enemies will appear, and how many or little will appear. Settings for each wave, including what wave to start at, building mode enabled or not, and inventory transfer. You can then click status to see what's enabled, then when you're ready, click load simulation. Inside, if you've chosen to allow buildings, you'll be able to build defenses or other structures with whatever you brought into the simulation. Inside, if you've chosen to allow building, you'll be able to build defenses or other structures with whatever you brought into the simulation. As you can see here, I cheated and just spawned a whole bunch of materials. Building is only allowed in certain areas outlined by a faint white line, as you can see here. After that, hit the start button and the enemies will start to attack. First few waves are pretty easy and some enemies even won't notice you're there because there's so little going on. But uh, around wave four, things start to get pretty crazy. Um, for instance, this is wave three or four, I believe. And that was with all my turrets going. I'm still like, I still got killed eventually. And uh, this here is wave 50. So like I said, you can skip to wave 50 in the uh, settings terminal before you go in the simulation, which is pretty insane. Wave 50 is, it's crazy, but it's awesome. And it goes up to 100 waves, I do believe. You can quit any time by hitting the same button that you started the waves with, but you will have to finish the current wave. All structures you build in each arena will stay there, which is nice. This is a great way to have some fun or gain some experience in a somewhat controlled environment. We is my week. Lego BZ by Higgyozi. If you've ever stepped on a Lego, then you know it's enough to make your legs break. Or hurt, hurt a lot. It hurts a lot. Lego BZ allows you to build Legos at the chemistry station that can then be thrown like mines and used to stagger anyone who feels like messing with you. Each throw will shell out four Lego shards which cannot harm you, but also can't be picked up after you throw them. There are two types of Legos. You've got standard and then poison and they all have a chance to stagger along with cripple enemies. This is a really funny idea, and I like the models and textures, just fits perfectly. And uh, yeah, just good all around. All right, everyone, that's gonna do it for this week's Fallout 4 mods. Hope you've enjoyed, I know I did. If you have any suggestions, put them in the comments, as always, and I'll check them out. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, I know I did, and I shall see you in the future. Away.